cheese and your spear. He moves, he moves a mouth. It's almost like I see a picture of them. The Holy Spirit
know you're never silent I know you're always speaking and revealing truth to me You're never silent So God come and let my heart be open To hear your voice, to hear your voice Quiet all the noise And let me hear your voice Let me hear your voice Silence all the noise let me hear your voice Let me hear your voice Cause the moment you stop speaking Is the moment that I am no more So I'm leaning in tonight to hear
there's no separation We are one, we are one My beloved, my beloved We are one, we are one And I can't find the beginning or the end
sweet presence. We thank you for the power of God that we feel in this place. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to move mightily, Lord, this weekend. Lord, we thank you that there's great expectation in this room. And those that are watching online, Lord, we just thank you that you're going to meet needs this weekend. And we're going to go deeper in you than we've ever been before. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. How many want to go deeper in God? Everybody, right? Everybody wants to go deeper in God. Everybody wants more of God, more of his presence. And that's why we gather together as brothers and sisters to join together, kind of uh, link arms and join together and um, go after God together. So we welcome everybody here. And uh, if you're watching online, wave. Online. Some of you are like, hey. But uh, in fact, those who are watching online on YouTube or Facebook, make sure you click the subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed to Kevin's YouTube page in here, they're working out the kinks. I'm the, I'm the gopher. They'll work out the kinks on the, on the uh, microphone here. Uh, but if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you know every time Kevin's doing something live and every couple of days something fresh is coming uh, on the YouTube channel. So everybody online, just press that subscribe button. We'd appreciate that. This is our first night. It's good to be in Tulsa, by the way. <laughs> Wave your hand if you're actually from this area around here. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for coming. And I remember when Kevin did the one night meeting here not too long ago. It was powerful. Uh, anybody here in that meeting? It, yeah, it was so good. Uh, and um, a couple of announcements. This is our first night, so we have a couple extra announcements. I want to give you uh, a heads up that tomorrow morning, even though it says we're starting at 10, we're going to start worship at 930. So we're going to come in here. We're going to start worship. So get here early and uh, worship with us. That'd be great. Also, our next two events that are coming up are uh, the next one's in Virginia Beach. Uh, so we want to tell everybody online. And it's, of course, a short drive for you guys. Just uh, head to Virginia Beach. And that's our next event. And then there's one in Pennsylvania. And so we're real excited about that. And so we're adding... Uh, new places even next year. Um, uh, Kevin didn't give me the liberty to say, otherwise I'd say, but there's some new places that are on his heart. And he called me, he said, by the way, we're going to go here and here uh, next year. So uh, uh, it's new places. So uh, you just pray that the Lord comes to your area and we'll go from there. Amen. Um, another thing I want to mention to you, because I was walking by the book table and I didn't know it was out, um, uh, the new Let's Worship Together live in New Orleans. Uh, worship CD is out. This was done in the studio. This is so good. And um, if you want some more worship, but there's a lot back there, but this is one of the newer ones live at New Orleans. You need to get that. The power of God was so strong uh, in New Orleans for that. And then one more thing. Uh, he's got a brand new, Kevin's got a brand new devotional called the Holy Spirit 60 Day Devotional. And I'm going to ask Kevin if I can borrow this for 60 days. And uh, <laughs> I'll give him, because I've been wanting to read it. Yeah, uh, so I've, I've read all of Kevin's books, literally all of them, and, um, the, and I have not read this one, so I'm going to borrow it for 60 days because I want a deeper encounter with the Holy Spirit. How about you? And before I came up, I was thumbing through it, and I was like, boy, that's good, and that one's good, all these little things he was saying. So uh, in, in this book, um, in this devotional, I know they're going to work out the kinks of this mic. Um, uh, in this devotional, there's a place where you can take notes, and I personally like that, what the Holy Spirit's saying to you. So anyway... One of the things that I get to do uh, for uh, Warrior Notes is Warrior Fellowships. How many are familiar with that? Raise your hand if you're familiar. Okay, great. So if you're not familiar, every week our students uh, are the ones that host these Warrior Fellowships. And Kevin and Kathy have created these videos, free videos, free PDFs, where you can host a Warrior Fellowship, which is a Bible study in your home, wherever you're at. And so if you're a student or want to be a student, there's free courses. You can sign up to host these Bible studies. So with that being said, we have them all over the world. I want to tell you what just happened. And if you could pray for this lady for me. She just emailed me, and I don't mean to be coy, but it's the truth. She, I can't tell you where she lives, and I can't tell you her name. And it's not where you think. She's just starting a warrior fellowship in a place where women and the gospel is not welcome. 
You know what I mean? So uh, it's, it's not where you think, though. It's a, it's a place that uh, it's a new warrior fellowship starting in this country. Um, and it, we need to pray for her. She said, please give me wisdom because I'm a woman and I'm passionate about warrior notes, passionate about doing this warrior fellowship. And she literally has to hide in her apartment sometimes. And so just pray that God sends her people. You know how it is over there if you've ever done missions work. So pray for her. And now listen to this testimony. You ready for this? This is so powerful. And, and you're going to be impressed what happens at the end of this. Pastor Ryan, I just want to share with you the things that are happening in our Warrior Fellowship. We started with a group of approximately six, approximately six adults. We started to grow, but not adults, but in children. Two weeks ago, we noticed that the group is increasing. So now we have to start a, start a separate children's warrior kids group with 23 children. <laughs> Then she goes on to talk about in the pictures that I sent you, you can see this and that. Uh, we have little space, but we've decided to build a tent in the back in our backyard. The children from the neighborhood, the ch there are children from the neighborhood, so we don't want to go too far. We bought the materials. Uh, we they talk about the thing. We are very grateful, although we're surprised with the way the Lord is turning things around. We're just following the Lord. And we're just wanted to give you an update as we're here in Suriname, South America. I mean, come on. You should see the pictures of all these kids in the backyard in South America. So I'm telling you, these things are happening all over the world. They're all over South Africa, Australia. I wanted to take a minute, extra minute today before we take the offering. I wanted to just tell you about what's going on because this is house church. This is the book of Acts. Of course, I know most of you go to church and you, you have a church and that's great. I have a church. All that is good. But these warrior fellowships are literally changing communities. We have warrior fellowships in homeless communities. And we, have home, we have them in huts in India. I'm not making this stuff up. They're all over Australia and Germany, all over the United States. So listen, you need to be a part of this, especially if you live where, uh, where, where there's not a lot of uh, churches and the gospel's not being preached. You need to do this and be a part of that. Amen? How many are ready to take the offering? All right, so we, I want to remind you, this ministry, uh, and Kevin likes to mention all the time about being so, uh, it, it's, we, we freely and willingly give to the Lord. We, we give, we give uh, abundantly, uh, we, we, we're cheerful, we're happy, we're excited. These are not just a bunch of adjectives to throw at you. It's we're purposing in our heart before we get there. I want to support what God's doing in South America. What God's doing in this country, I can't name. I mean, that, that young lady, she's all by herself. I just can't get over it. And uh, uh, all the things that we're doing for the children. And by the way, during worship, all the kids, you can come up here and grab a flag and, and wave it during worship. You can do that. So we just want to reiterate that uh, Kevin, uh, since I've been with him, He's never done this, but since I've been with him, he's never pulled on your heartstring. You know, you got to give and you got to be, you know, we're going to go under and it, that's not the way it is at all. But you need a purpose in your heart, what you're going to give, because you know what this ministry is doing. You know what this ministry is all about. And we had a staff meeting this morning about what Kevin said he wants to see in the future. It's mind blowing. It's mind blowing what we're, we're going to do for people. And uh, we want to keep giving and blessing. Amen. We want to be a part of the giving uh, uh, awakening. Amen. So if you're making out a check, you can make it out to warrior notes ushers. If you come and if you want to give online, you can do that. You can make, you can uh, do text to give, but thank you for giving. Thank you for, for being a part of this ministry. How many excited to be here? All right, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into good soil, to sow into what you're doing. Lord, we thank you for your miracle working power flowing through all these precious people here, all those online. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, it's a joy uh, as a Christian to give to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Mike. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We are so excited because we know God's got something very special for you. You know, every conference, I love to see how you start and then how you end because you won't even recognize yourself. When the glory comes, you can't help but be transformed, right? And so because of that, you know, that's everything that we all do. We come here because we want to seek the Father, we want to be transformed, and then we want to do the works 
of Jesus Christ, right? Now, all that's possible because we have some of the most incredible partners all over the world that are backing up Kevin and Kathy. And it's because of the partners that there is no charge for this. You could come tomorrow morning, guess what? No charge. You can bring your kids to The Sims, guess what? No charge. You can get a flag. All these things, you know, they cost money, but they're no charge because we have partners all over the world that are supporting this ministry, and they're making sure that you can come and receive without hindrance. Isn't that beautiful? And so who got their, their study guides? Let me see. Who got their free study guides? All right, everybody. Fantastic. A partner paid for that. A partner sewed into your life. And we're so thankful. So if you're a partner, would you raise your hand? We just want to honor you guys. Wow, thank you so much. Please give them a big clap. You guys are incredible. It's, uh, it's such a, and a privilege and an honor to be a part of Warrior Notes because to see what God's doing blows our minds every day. You know that testimony that Ryan just shared, and, and I think I have one better than his. No, I'm just kidding. It's all kingdom, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> But I thought it'd be funny. But um, we're so excited because we're ramping up for our very first Warrior Notes School of Ministry graduation. And if you don't know about Warrior Notes School of Ministry, let me inform you. This school started just about three years ago, and we uh, and Kevin has poured out his heart in these classes and in these courses. And because of all the hard work he's put into it, we now have almost twenty-seven thousand students all over the world in, le- in three years, three years. And we're going to have our first graduating class. Warrior Note School of Ministry is now fully accredited. We are going to be offering associates, and we're going all the way up to doctorate. We are setting it up through Kevin and Kathy's vision where we can get your kids at the very beginning. The moment they can have a flag, we want them up here. We want them to know their identity in Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important that all the partners help make all this happen because the vision is not just to get you to a conference, it's to get your kids from the moment they can sing, whatever the note is, they can sing it, then they can go into homeschooling, then they can work into their their education at Warrior Notes School of Ministry, and then they get to do the greater works of the kingdom. So I got to share this with you. So at least you thought you had any excuses and you're like, well, school's not for me or this is not for me. This is a dear woman who is a partner and a student. She says, I'm 72 years old and I'm a retired elementary school teacher. I was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit in 1973. So if you've been a Christian for more than 10 years, it's okay. God's got more for you. (laughs) Don't think about the good old days. Think about what's ahead of you. Amen. Amen. I have completed 22 courses, so don't say I can't do technology because this precious woman is tearing it up. 22 courses, and I have the joy of hosting a Warrior Fellowship on Thursday evenings. Okay, now this, I literally read this and cried, and I want to cry right now because this is everything that Kevin and Kathy want. This is the heart of God. You ready? I use these lessons from classes I have, and I use them to teach at a farm where we have women who come for addictions that have made mistakes and human trafficking. These ladies love Kevin's teaching, and my guess many of them are ready to join Warrior Notes School of Ministry and graduate. Some of them are also wandering to know about homeschooling because they're ready to implement that with their kids. This is what it's all about, guys. It's not about a beautiful building. It's about you, the living building, the living stones. And so this weekend, receive. Everything's been taken care of. Partners have paid for everything. If you have something in your heart to give, you give. But receive from the Lord because you have a gift and you have a calling. And it's time to activate that and it's time to walk in that. Amen? All right, Dr. Kevin Zadai. Oh, I apologize. Hold that. Pastor Sixto. Good evening. Welcome. Okay, let's see. Where are all our Warrior Notes students? And you live here in Tulsa, and this is your area. All right, so all the Warrior Notes students and all those that are local. Guys, we're going to be hands and feet tomorrow morning. So we brought about 4,000 pounds of food. So tomorrow morning, if you'd like to join us, Come right here in this ballroom, 8.30 tomorrow morning. We're going to pack bags of groceries. 
And then we're going to pray over those groceries. And then we're going to hand them to you. And you're going to go out into this community and you're going to impact this community. Amen. I've already spoken to the officers in this room. And they said, look, we know we can tell you where to go. And so we're going to team up with the local officers in the city. And they're going to give us some insights on where we're going to take the food and how we're going to impact this city. Amen. Amen. This is the beginning. We're going to start sowing seeds into Tulsa. Amen. Amen. So come on out and join us 830. Just meet us right here in the back of the room, and let's do this for Jesus. Amen? All right, Dr. Kevin. Any single mom, if you need groceries, you can take a bag of groceries home with you. If you know a senior that needs it, you can single dads, you can take it home and be a blessing to them. Amen? All right? Let's do it, guys. Thank you. Amen. And um, I would really like everybody to show up early tomorrow morning and pray for Ukraine. And even though, even though there, it's cosmetic, a lot of things we do, what I call cosmetic on the future, on the, on the surface future. Anyway, the, the um, waving of a flag, and, and if you in, do some investigation in the Old Testament, there's a lot of things that were cosmetic or surface. But to God, it was important, like showing up at the communion table and discerning the Lord's body, and that way you don't get sick, you don't die early, you're not weak, to quote Paul. So there's a, there, it seems cosmetic, you, you take communion, but it says, listen, when you come together, you, you don't discern the Lord's body, you, you don't wait for everybody, eat while you're home. When you come, this is a sacred time. Take the cup, take the bread, this is the Lord's body. Remember him until he comes. And if you do this and you do it properly, you won't be weak, you won't be sick, and you won't die early. That's in the Greek, the homebrew, and the Hebrew. You know, so <laughs> the the on the surface, things um, look like they're just you know, okay, we're going to take communion, then we're going to take the offering, then we're going to do this, and then um, we're going to hand people over to Satan like Paul did. You go when you when you're there, when you're there, and um, you, that one that's a nimwit. We're going to hand him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. So after the offering, call the people up that are, are going to be handed over to Satan for the week. And then, no, you know, the, the new church, the new church in the New Testament, they did a lot of things. And it was very, very sacred and important. And uh, Paul, Paul uh, was overseeing churches and he was saying, listen, there's stuff going on in, in, this, in, your, in the Corinthian church that even the world doesn't do. So turn that one over to Satan during the service. And, you know, Ananias and Sapphira, they were doing a reverse offering. They were taking up offerings, and then they were distributing it. If you read chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians, it says that those are prospering at this time. That's really good. But can you give so that those who are, are having trouble right now, that we can distribute and make it equal? And so... When Anna and I, Sapphira, were part of this program where they would sell property and, you know, whatever else, and then they would lay it at the apostles' feet, then it was to be distributed. It, it never left the building. So what has happened? Okay, so it's the same thing with the Ukraine flag. You know, I'm not... I'm not particularly supporting any country. I don't even, you know, I don't even know about mine from day to day, you know. <laughs> but I, I do support what God's doing here and in other countries. But the thing of it is, I'm saying all this because I want to pray for Ukraine, but I want to pray for the Christians in Ukraine. And I want to pray for the Christians in Russia. I want to pray for the Russians that are in Ukraine that are Christians. And God is about people. You got to remember that. So when I, 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 the Lord told me, get these flags, have the kids wave them and, and come up and worship and pray for Ukraine. But we're praying for people. You know, we're not, we're not praying that countries and be general about it are going to be judged or this or that because I'm not going to do that. That's not my job. My job is to intercede and stand in the place, in the gap. There are so many precious people over there that, that, are, that are Russian that don't even agree. They're, they're Russian soldiers that are in their neighborhoods that they grew up in, and they're having to push out their grandma. And that's why they're, they're, they're deserting, leaving their, their equipment, 
saying, I'm done, you know. I mean, you saw the interviews. That's the real thing that's going on over there. It's the same here. You know, I love everybody, but people still go to hell anyway. Well, that's not right. So things on the surface seem cosmetic that we do sometimes, but it is important. It is important if, if God sees a flag being waved, if there was a wave offering in the Old Testament, why was there a wave offering? Why did it say that when you, you burnt an offering that it came up into the nostrils of the Lord and it was pleasing to him? I, does, you know, does he like in and out burger? I mean, <laughs> no, there's something about that. There's something deeper like the communion table that people were dying over. So I think we should understand it. And I believe that if you take a flag and you wave it before the Lord, that you do that in faith, that is not cosmetic like you think, even though it looks cosmetic on the surface. It doesn't matter. The anointing would be just as strong if I had a tank top on. <laughs> but because people get offended by that, then I have to wear, a, you know. And, you know, no, you know I, I like it cooler. But, you know, when it's, when it's too cold, I'd lose half the people. So... But it's too hot, I lose half the people. I could wear the, you know, so there's, there's always going to be this. But God loves people. And so I want to I uh, spend this weekend talking about the voice of God. But I have flags. I want the kids to come up. We got plenty of stuff up here. I, I want the kids to come up and worship. I want you to come up and worship. Um, I want to bring back the altar into the church again. And... I'm going to start in the hotels, but I believe it's going to come back to your local church where they have, they have altar time and, and a call to worship and a time of reflecting. And, you know, uh, eventually, eventually, because I spend three hours of service sowing the word, I believe that the crop that I'm going to get back from that word over the last five years of three hour services, I, I'm, just, I'm done. I'm done doing three hour services, but the, the Holy Spirit says, no, you got to keep sowing the word because that is going to produce a crop. But we're getting to that point, I mean, within the month, within a month, we're getting to the point where that, is, that part of what is going on here is, is, is going to change. And there's gonna be more interaction with God in the glory during the services. And so people are gonna start getting healed even though they're getting healed now, it's going to be more people getting healed. There'll be people waiting to get inside from out there. They'll be waiting in line to get in because it's full, because people are getting healed. If they can get in the room, they heard they can get healed. Nobody blows on them or touches them or anything. No offering needs to be, be given by a person to get healed. Okay, so we're, that's, that's where we're going, but we're, we're getting very close to that. But we have, to, we have to preach the word because signs follow the preaching of the word. Signs follow the word. And the word is being confirmed with signs and wonders following, according to scripture. So we're getting to that place. I'm within 30 days. I'm believing. I'm, I'm actually, you know, for, we've had this plan for over a year that, that for this switch. And, you know, we had already designated May as being that month. And I told my staff a year ago, get ready to take take the helm because I am going to concentrate on the aviation, uh, the departments for the kids and the aviation. We're going to start to train kids and specialize kids. And we got to get this homeschooling done. And there's a lot of stuff we've got to do. And, uh, you know, I need to start an airline. I mean, I need to be able to, to provide transportation to and from our conferences for you. Yeah. So. I need, I need more trucks so that we can, we can do more food. I need, you know, so we're, we're going to keep expanding. I'm not doing that because if you don't want to help, you don't have to. But, but please come and hear the word at least. You know, it's free. But I'm going to feed too because sometimes that speaks louder than what I say. You know, and that's why I tell you, if, if you go to a res restaurant or a drive through um, pay for the person behind you. It doesn't matter if they've got an Obama sticker on their, on their... Well, he's still a president, right? Well, it doesn't matter what, who it is behind you. If you pay for their meal and just say, I want to pay for the car behind me, too, and they go, well, do you know them? I go, no. But see, that speaks louder than your bumper sticker.
just tell them that Jesus loves them. That's all. You know, you can do these kind of things. It's not, you know, it, it, you, you just got to get out of this mentality that you're surviving. You know, I pull, like come in here, the winds were so bad. I pulled back on a throttle to save, to save fuel. And then I thought, well, no, they doubled the fuel. Okay, we're going for it. And I pushed it up. And I burned extra, you know what? You, you know what? You got to get out of that mentality. I probably say I would have saved like maybe seven bucks <laughs> in four minutes, you know. <laughs> All because, you know, I got to conserve, you know, bad times, you know, hard times, you know. It's, no, those engines don't even care. They're just like, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> Giant sucking sound, just like Washington. A lot of hot air coming out the back, too. <laughs> now, listen to me. Listen to me. God, God's, my, my thing about God's voice is that everyone, according to the Scripture, according to Paul, if he has anything to say about it, he was equaling, leveling the field. He was making it equal that everyone could come to the Lord. Everyone could be partakers of the divine nature. Peter said that but also that we are part of this, this section or this generation that was revealed the mystery. He said this mystery was hidden from ages past. Paul said it's been revealed in this time. And the mysteries he talks about to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 2 as well. He said that the Spirit reveals the deep things of God. And no one knows, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what Christ or what God has for those who love him. But it has been revealed to us by his spirit. So we have the mind of Christ. This is all part of the revelation of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, those first 15 verses. And when you talk about what I just quoted in Colossians, and if you read chapter 1 and chapter 2, this mystery has been hidden, but now it's been revealed. Okay, so when Martin Luther saw that there was only one mediator between God and man, it flipped him out because you had to go to the priest and confess your sins. And according to what I found when I did my thesis in college, I found that the list of all the sins and how much you had to pay in order to, to get forgiven of them. I mean, it, that hasn't been this. I mean, you all, you all just like kind of like try to ignore it. But that wasn't that long ago that you had to pay. So there's this mentality that we're always, there's this spirit, this antichrist spirit that we're always fighting. So you know when it's coming to fruition, when you can see fruit on the tree. So when the Pope says there is more than one way to God, he's going directly against what Jesus said about himself in John 14. So when, when you listen to what's being said, and, and that's where it's come to, there's many ways to God. If, you, if that, that is not true, I, I had to repeat, I can't even repeat that. I, I just felt a grieving by the Holy Spirit when I even just said it. I'm not mean, I don't mean it. I'm quoting, I'm quoting the Antichrist. But this is the spirit that is, gets into uh, people that claim to have, have God. So they have a form of godliness, godliness, but they deny the power of it. So Martin Luther, he nailed those theses to the wall. And he said, There's, you're not on that list. There's only one mediator between God and man, and you're not on the list, period. Okay, but that means that we all have access without the priest, without the pope, and without the prophet, and without the apostle, and without the evangelist, and the, and the teacher. And if I forgot one of the five, I'm sorry. Pastor, of course. See, I know I always forget one because I got it out of order. Okay, so I was a pastor. I mean, most of my staff is pastors of churches right now. So we're not anti anti pastor, anti church or anything. I'm not competing against the church. I'm com I'm competing against the the devil who has isolated people outside of church that are good people that just need to be brought in. Amen. And I'm 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 for the lost. So you know, the lost are not in a fold. And the people that are outside of a fold are not in a fold. So I don't see the problem. I have warrior fellowships because I just want people 
to at least get a hot meal a week and, and help people at the same time. But see, the theses were nailed to the wall because they saw, they saw that, they, that the church was off. Okay? Now, if you look at Colossians, Paul refers to the Laodiceans in, in that letter. And if you, if you look at some manuscripts, you will see that Colossians and Ephesians, some of the manuscripts have the Laodiceans at the top because those, those letters were, were sent to, to different churches, not just the ones that are labeled to. They were passed around. Okay, so Laodicea comes up, and it's the one where John on the Isle of Patmos, not that long um, afterwards. I mean, when you think about Jesus was there in the 30s, and then, then you have John that lived on, and they couldn't kill him. So they put him in a, on an island. Then you have Paul that got saved. So Paul's writing to the Laodiceans. Jesus is appearing to John on the Isle of Patmos. That's one of the churches, the seven churches, is the Laodicean church. And if you remember, okay, so they had Jesus, they had Paul, and now they have Jesus again through John. And this is what John has to tell the pastor there. You say, you can see, you say you're rich and you're well-dressed. He says, tell them they're poor, they're naked, and they're blind. Okay, do you have to be told that? That's deception, right? But my point is this. They did not see this or they wouldn't have been like this. So it's only 40 years, 40, 50 years since Jesus walked the earth there. Paul's still there. John gets interrupted on his vacation in Patmos, and, he, and he's told, listen, tell them they're blind. This is how it happens in every generation, unfortunately. So we have what we call moves of God. We have reformation. We have all these different things. We call it moves of God and, you know, whatever else you want to name it. Um, you know, prophetic, pathetic, you know, movements. You know, you have all these different things. You'd label them certain ways. They're, they're movements of the Spirit, but it shouldn't be a switch that we have to turn off and on. It shouldn't be something that we have to, we shouldn't have to be revived if we're not dead. But what happens is, is when we're left to ourselves, we always end up off course. And so you have people like the apostle, the true apostles will speak and father people and disciple people. And then the prophets will speak what the will of God is, which very rarely comes to pass. And that's the unfortunate thing is that what God wants very rarely comes to pass. And everybody that, that says, you know, well, if God wants something done, he'll do it. That does not work. If you, I mean, if you want to use the Bible as your, as your guide. To see, the truth is always going to be absolute from heaven, but very rarely does God get his way. And this has been the problem, is we're waiting on God, and God's waiting on us. He actually has completed everything through Christ. So we were made in his image, we were created like him in the beginning in, in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. So now the Holy Spirit, he is, he is the one who is in the fivefold. So the fivefold were appointed, it says God sets in the church. So a person can't set a fivefold minister in. I mean, God sets them in the church, but then they're recognized in the church. God sets in the church some to be. That's what, if you want to bring Paul into it. If you don't, then we don't need to be talking about the Bible. Because Christians believe in the Bible, okay? And God sets in the church some to be, not everybody. And trust me, if you, if you knew what it was like to be a pastor, you wouldn't want to be one. If you knew what it was like, amen. And then the evangelist, evangelist and the teacher, the teachers are held accountable more than anyone because of the fact that they're teaching the word of God. And Paul said they're held at a higher accountability. Okay, so you have the prophet. No prophet that I know wants to be a prophet. No apostle that I know wants to be an apostle. Paul said we're at the end of the procession. We're the off-scouring of the earth. You want that? 
And when they asked for his ID, he took his shirt off and showed them the stripes on his back. He goes, I took on the same stripes that our Lord took on. That was his ID. Can I see your ID? He takes his shirt off. So do you want to be an apostle? Do you want to bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you want to spend three days and three nights in the open water floating? Do you want to spend most of your life incarcerated? You see, this, this is the reality, but inside, the Spirit is still willing, just like he was when Jesus told the disciples, can you pray an hour with me? Work with me here. Can you pray one hour so that you can go through the temptation that's coming to you, that you can bear up under it? You, can you pray an hour with me? And the answer was no. But he said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So they all fell asleep, right? It was all, it was all staged in the spirit. It was the ten virgins. The, the garden was the Garden of Eden, that where he prayed and where he fought was where Satan stole Adam and Eve, right there. That's the disputed territory. Jesus was wrestling and taking back what was lost right there. And he was asking his 12 to work with him. Well, it was 11, but you know, but there was 12. <coughs> He was asking them to yield to the spirit, not the flesh. The flesh is, is, is weak, but the spirit is willing. Okay, so obviously, listen, they, they spent three and a half years. You, you think this weekend's long. They spent three and a half years of spirit school. They all fell asleep. They, they heard Jesus say, can you, can you stay with me an hour? And it says they all fell asleep. And he goes, okay, that's it. We're done. And the army came and took him away. Okay, but he did say, can you pray with it? He asked them to pray an hour. And he said that the, the key was the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so obviously the flesh won. Against a people, 12, that had a three and a half year spirit school. Every day. Can you imagine the power that was coming from Jesus? that they were that close to him all the time. They saw the miracles. They heard the word. They, 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 they probably were saturated. You know, like I remember just being down the street at Ramah, and after two years, I was going to explode. I said, I got to get out of here, and I got to, like, get this out. It got to where I felt like I was going to explode from being in those classes every day with John, John Osteen, um, Lester Summerall came, um, all these people. All, all the generals laid hands on us, spoke into our lives. And I, I, at the end of two years, I, I thought I was going to explode. And it was beyond, it was like heaven on earth. I had, I had the best friends that I, I mean, I had the best group of friends I'd ever had. I mean, every single person, we all got along, nobody fought. We had a great time, and the Lord said, enjoy this, because it will never be like this again. I go, you got to be kidding me. And Brahms on Tuesday was $3 for a burger, fries, and a shake. <laughs> okay, so I thought, i got to get out of here, and i got to go preach. i got to go, i got to go, i got to go. And it's the same way with them, three and a half years with Jesus, and and yet, God did not have his way in the garden that night. Jesus was alone, okay? So God's will is not always done, but it's spoken. So people in the ministry need to speak forth what God's will is, even at the risk of it, that they're wrong, because they're not wrong. You have to speak what God is saying anyway. You have to speak the things that are not as though they were, and you can never give up. This is part of how we were created, never to give up, never to let go of truth, knowing that truth prevails, but there's a process, there's a war going on. There are people that need to see the truth 
and be changed. And you're part of that by standing firm. Okay, so getting back to how, how in every generation we get off and we focus on certain things and it's like a cycle. It's well needed. It's so it's needed, but yet there is a full table with a full amount of benefits for all of us. And I don't want to just eat the green beans every meal. I, there's a whole there's a, a, all the benefits are at the table of the Lord. He sets me, according to Psalms 23, he, he prepares a table of honor is actually what it says. A table of honor in the presence of my enemies. They actually have to sit there and watch me be honored. That's what it says. Look it up and do a study and, and do other translations. So God sets these benefits in front of you. And if you just participate in the healing movement, then that's what you'll get. You'll get healing. But what about everything else? What about paying your bills? What about your crazy, crazy uh, relatives? What about your job? What about the disease of the week? The Greek alphabet soup, you know, whatever... Whatever is coming down the stream, you, if, you are, if you're sharp, you will take it out with a long-range sniper rifle so it never gets here. But that's what the church is supposed to be doing. The church is supposed to be this, the most, um, the most um, authoritative entity on the earth. We're supposed to have the authority, and we're supposed to be speaking what God is saying. And that carries a lot of weight in the spirit. The thing of it is, is is that it's a mystery of manifestation. In other words, you've got to take what is, what is there and you've got to have it manifested in your life. So you've got to pay your bills. You can't just believe to pay your bills. They've got to be paid. The bottom line is they've got to be paid. You've got to have the right job. You've got to have the right relationships. You've got to be doing the right thing in your track and not being sad because you're not someone else. So all these things are because of the fall. So Jesus went back. He, he was sent into Egypt for two years. He came out with his parents back through and over the Jordan and then started to preach. He escaped to Egypt, though, because Herod wanted to kill him. But he really rechased the patriarchs and the path up into the promised land. So it was, it was set up. Everything he did was symbolic and prophetic. So when he said to John, no, you have to baptize me to fulfill all righteousness, the, the whole idea of Jesus coming was as a, the son of man. He had to come as a man, and he had to operate in the confines of a man anointed. How, how, Jesus, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went around doing good and healing everyone that was oppressed by the devil. He didn't say the Son of God. He was the Son of God, but he considered equality with God as being nothing that can be comprehended. He became a servant. So he didn't, he didn't even consider himself as being equal with God, even though he was. He came... And that was the temptation in the desert. The temptation in the desert was if you're the son of God, turn this rock into bread. Instead, he came back with the word, man, man, not, God, not, not the son of God. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Jesus, when, when the, the devils knew who he was, he said, shut up. You're the son of God. Shut up. He told him to shut up. He didn't want their testimony, but he also wanted to be known as the Son of Man. Why? Because he was taking our place so that at the end of his life, he could say, now, you're going to do the same things I've done and even greater things. He could not have said that if he had done anything as the Son of God. Now, that's going to take some of you three years to accept. 
But that is the absolute truth about redemption. He had to be a man that was tempted like we were, if you want to bring the Bible into it. And he had to be able to hear God's voice and obey it, even to the point of suffering for obedience. That's what it says, if you want to bring the Bible into it. So Hebrews talks about it. Okay, so we, we have had men and women stand up for us in different generations because the Antichrist spirit got in to the church and made it and made it something that wasn't. And Jesus encountered this with the Pharisees. He said, you brood of vipers, you sons of Satan. He said, you're just like your father, the devil. Can you imagine calling the head of your denomination that? But he said, you're just like him. You lie just like him. And when you make a convert, you make him twice the son of hell that you are. Who's warned you the coming wrath? He was always at their throat. Why? Because they had become people who were enslaving others. They, he, was, he says, you're supposed to be taking yokes off and you're putting them on. Do you get it? Yeah. Okay. So you have a form of godliness, but do you deny the power of it? Because you deny the resurrection. You deny the resurrection power. Okay. So for instance... These people, they're clouds without rain. It's what, it's what Jude was talking about and James, the clouds without rain. They, they, they're visible, but they have no manifestation, no purpose. So when it comes down to it, they have no manifestation. They say, tongues are done away with. There's no more gifts of the Spirit. And they take everything off the table, and all you have is a Sunday school lesson about something that happened a long time ago. And a God that might be angry at you, we don't know. Okay, but that is not the gospel. That's not what Jesus presented to us. That's not what the apostles who laid the foundation for the church, the glorious church without spot and wrinkle, the one that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. It is a powerful resurrected church. There is a power that is the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. It's dwelling in us. Okay, so tongues is going to go away as long and the gifts and the fivefold when we reach perfection. But I haven't met anybody like that. Just go out to the parking lot after this. <laughs> we haven't reached perfection. Paul said all these things, tongues will be done away with, prophecy will be done away with, because perfection comes, we don't have need for this. So the perfection comes with the fivefold ministry building up the body until we reach maturity and unity in the faith. Then, building up the body, Paul says, then the body goes out and ministers. The apostles, according to Book of Acts, if you want to bring the Bible into it, they had a meeting and said, listen, we need to designate those who are going to wait on the tables for the widows and the orphans and the people in need so that the apostles can dedicate their time to the study of the word and prayer. So they, they dedicated people in the body to minister to the people so that they, the, the fivefold could be built up enough to build up the body. But then the, the body was supposed to be ministering. They were the ministers. Well, you don't hear that at all. But Stephen had notable miracles. It says that God was with him. He had notable miracles. That means he had profound things happening, and he was a table waiter. He was not an apostle. It doesn't say that he was anything. But they killed him because when he, it says the Pharisees grit their teeth when he talked. Have you ever been in a church like that? Yes. Where you talk, and, 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 and the, what you're saying is from the other realm, and then they get mad at you. You can't do that. Why? Because you're not me. I don't want to be you. <laughs> if you start speaking from the other realm, that's what we're talking about, the transaction of the power of God, the, the resurrection power that's in you, manifests through you by your words, by your actions. It produces fruit in keeping with that repentance. Okay, so... How this all has to do with the voice of God is that religion in the Antichrist spirit will always want to put a middleman in there. And you know what happens when you get people in a transaction involved. 
every person gets a piece of it. And before you know it, you, you hardly have anything, and it was your idea. So if you, you, you have an invention and you get people to be, you know, this and that, before you know it, it's whittled down to, it would have been better just to keep your mouth shut and not even get in a patent. But that, according to Hebrew, if you, if you look in the Hebrew and what is said in Ezekiel 28, talking about Lucifer, talking in Isaiah 14, if you look at what is being said, it says that because of his merchandising, the multitude of his merchandising, his trafficking, he defiled his sanctuaries. So he was over sanctuaries. But his merchandising defiled him. Well, he was a middleman. He became, he inserted himself in to where men were, became enslaved with a system, a world system. So we became enslaved, not just from sin, but the results of sin is we become enslaved with that world system, and it's the Antichrist spirit. Okay, it gets into what we call religion, which is powerless. So there's a form of godliness. It, it looks good, but there's no power in it. Okay, so these people, and it's 80% of the world in the, what we call the Christian realm. 80% of what we call Christian is, has no power. So no, 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 very, if you get anything else tonight, um, let me know because I want to know. But no, if you <laughs> hear this, hear this, okay? You, the system is set up, the world system, Satan, is set up so that you, you always are enslaved. That's how the world system is set up. So you're always enslaved. He's the God of this world, according to Paul. And we obeyed him and had no way of resisting him, according to Paul, until we were saved. And some people still don't resist him even though they're saved, but this was the plan from the beginning, okay? So well, listen carefully because the whole plan is that you never get out of debt. You never get well. You never have good relationships. You're always the victim and everything you do, it always fails. And everybody misunderstands you. And please don't go out on a full moon and when the, when the age of Aquarius, when all the planets line up, because you're, you're in a lot of trouble. See, it gets you enslaved. And it's set up so that you keep taking drugs that just mask the, the symptoms. And so religion is that influence that, that Jesus was coming against he was coming against the spirit of the world, that system that binds people. He said, you're supposed to be taking yokes off of people. Why are you putting on, on, on? You know, Moses was given 10 commandments. They had 613. So there's all these do's and don'ts. And Jesus said, I'll just sum them all up with these two, which is really three. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's three. You love yourself, you love your neighbor as yourself, and you love God. That's three. That sums up all the law. Okay, so if you love God and you love people and you love yourself, you're not gonna speed. You're not gonna break laws. You're not gonna steal, kill, and destroy. You, we love God, so we do righteous. So that's why Jesus said, to fulfill all righteousness, you've got to baptize me, John, to fulfill all righteousness. And it's just so interesting that God the Father spoke audibly from heaven, and Jesus is in the water there, and the Holy Spirit comes down on top of him, so God the Father is speaking, and Jesus is there, and the Holy Spirit is lighting on him like a dove. And we have a problem with the Trinity? That was not the Muppet Show. That was not somebody throwing their voice. Those were three different people of the Godhead manifesting at the River Jordan 
John was not throwing his voice. Jesus was not throwing his voice. This is the Trinity. In heaven, you'll have no problem with the Trinity. Down here, you're going to have arguments. You're going to have arguments about tongues or no tongues, tithing or no tithing. You're going to have all these arguments, but up there, there is no problem with any of this. I'm telling you the truth. I was there. There's no arguments up there. God gets his way all the time. He's already spoken. Nobody asks him something he's already said. Nobody even asks him, can you rephrase it so it's a little bit easier for me to handle? No. He doesn't rephrase anything. He just says, this is the way it is. Why? Because that's who he is. Okay? So this gets you in a frame of mind tonight as I talk about this, that we were created in his image. And what you'll find, what you'll find, and I knew I was going to get hit when I came back. I knew I was going to get hit. I was told not to defend myself about what happened to me. I was told just to tell what I saw and heard. What I heard was the red letters of the Bible being spoken to me by the person who spoke to me. He was quoting himself for 45 minutes. What I was, what I was shown was the kingdom of God as it was represented by every single person that preached it. Exactly. Exactly. There was no gray area. There was no questions. There was no problem with anything. It was just, this is the way it is. It was so simple. The kids get it. They grow up and become complicated. Okay, so I saw that God speaks and that's it. And then he presents to you through the Bible, through the gospel, through messengers, the word as it has been spoken already. So he is quoting and he's giving a description of what is in heaven and what it's supposed to be on the earth. So it's too simple because it would only last five minutes and you'd be home early already. But really what it is, is, is Lord, let your will be done on the earth as it already is in heaven. That's exactly why we're here, is to take it and pull it into this realm. And me pulling back on a throttle to save fuel is really not going to matter a million years from now. The fact was, is did I obey God and come here? Okay, so it's the same way with you. You're saving pennies, and God wants you to have huge amounts to be able to help in every situation according to scripture so that you are, have abundance in every situation. If you want to bring 2 Corinthians chapter 9 into it, which you're not supposed to be giving out of compulsion. You're supposed to determine in your heart what you want to give before you come. Paul took the offering before he came. I would do that, but you're not here until I get here. <laughs> but you determine in your heart because God loves a cheerful giver. Okay, but... You, you have to remember that God's purpose, according to Paul, was, I don't need your money. Paul said that. I don't need your money. I'm in jail. They're paying for it. No. You know, he's, he's saying, this is for your benefit, for it to be laid up to your account, and also to have extra so that you can help others in every need that prevents, it presents itself. Okay. So that's why you... You need to be healthy. You need to prosper. You need to have the ability to win people over in their soul. You need to be good at relationships. But the world system is going to fight everyone because it enslaves people into never allowing them to be healed. It's not health care. It's not financial help. It's not even counseling. Jesus came back to set people free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. It says, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Okay, so if you are being enslaved, then the Spirit is not there. And that mocks Jesus because Jesus said, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I have been set free by the Son of God. And I never forget where I came from. I 
I, I never forget that I was translated or transferred into the kingdom of light and that I no longer listen to Satan, whatever he wants to do and say, we do not agree on anything. Uh, the, only, the only thing that I am called to do is drive him out, is to push him back and, and to continually tell him a lie, lie, that he's a liar, continually confirm his destiny. And to allow people to be set free and to give them good news. You have to give them the good news of the gospel. It's good news. And Jesus gave the criteria. He was reading Isaiah. He said, this is fulfilled in your midst. And this is what I've come to do. And he's, he's setting the captives free. He's healing the, the eyes of the blind. He's, he's, he's preaching jubilee. Debt cancellation, sin is your sins are canceled. God's not angry. Your sins are canceled. He, he's, he's preaching the good news that you're delivered. This, this is going to have to work in any pandemic and in any country at any time. Doesn't matter who's president, the gospel has to work. Yes, it is. But it works through manifestation. But see, the greatest is not faith. It's actually love. But James says, show me your faith by what you do. But the greatest of these is love, not faith. So what, it, what does love do? Love, love honors God and obeys God. Because Jesus said, if you, if you love me, you'll obey me. But it also, you, you also love yourself, which really doesn't go over well with the religious people. But, but Jesus said it, love your neighbor as yourself. So you got to love your neighbor, but you got to love your neighbor as yourself. So that's why he said, you know, you do unto others as you would have others do unto you. So what, what you don't want to enslave people. You want to have them set free. You, you're not the healer. You pray for people to be healed. God does the healing. You do the praying. Do you get it? Okay, so you're, it's not your responsibility to get people healed. You have to be ready to pray. The prayer. But see, to me, healing is just as powerful whether I lay hands on you or I spit in your eyes and tell you to go wash in the River Jordan or go show yourself to a priest. It was something different every time. Because it was not the mode. It was the power of God. But the centurion, I mean, you know, if you want to bring in great faith, I don't know if you're interested in, there's only two times that Jesus actually marveled at great faith. And it wasn't in Israel. It wasn't the Israelis. It was the outside people that did, weren't under the covenant. He said, he said to the centurion who attributed faith to understanding authority. He said, you just speak the word and it'll be done because I'm under authority and I'm also in authority. So I just tell somebody to do it and they do it. So if you just tell me, it'll be done. Jesus said, I, I've never found this great a faith in all of Israel. So he attributed what that man said as being great faith. Well, his, what he said was talking about authority. So this is what I tell people because I love to flip over tables is that prosperity has more to do with understanding the covenant and your authority than it does with giving. And that goes over real well as the ministers throw bottles at me right now. <laughs> but think about it. Think about it. Jesus didn't, didn't take offerings, but that bag had money going out of it all the time. But it doesn't say that there was money coming into it, but he had a lot of supporters. But he didn't emphasize that. Now, don't find yourself on the Isle of Patmos getting visited to be told that you're blind and that you're poor and you're naked. Hear what the Spirit's saying to you tonight. See, the Spirit of God is talking to us. God's talking, and you can hear His voice. But what He's saying is He's telling you how to get out of the ditch. It starts with a 
location of where you're at, and then a coordinates on where you're going, and then a pathway to that in between. So you have to locate where you're at, turn yourself in. It's not gonna be pretty when you get located where you're at, okay? Then you determine where you're going. That's not gonna be pretty because there's gonna be quite a bit of distance maybe between where you are and where you need to go, okay? But this is all good for us to become accountable and turn ourselves in because you can't really solve problems and get healed and get correction. I can't get that in my life unless I've located where I'm at and where I'm going. And if I don't turn myself in to the controller, they, they can't locate me. They gotta know where I'm at and then they gotta ask you for your destination. If you filed a flight plan, they know all that. But the bottom line is this, listen, turning yourself in and saying I'm lost is, is really a good thing. It actually saves fuel and it saves people from dying. Okay, so a lot of people are tied to each one of you. That's why I'm here tonight. It's because I care about you. I, and I, I don't, there, there, is, there is no fi financial advantage to me to go out because actually everything that I do, it comes in whether I go out or not. To tell you the truth, where, where, where God blesses me is in, in things that nobody's thinking about. It's not in the offerings. So the only advantage for me to coming to you now is so I can come and look at you and tell you this. God wants to get you out of where you're at because you were never supposed to be there. Because the good news is it's going to be free it's good, and it's not going to be hard, but you're going to have to locate yourself. In other words, you've got to turn yourself in. People don't want to humble themselves and, tell, and say they're lost. So they end up in the desert for 40 years doing circles because they won't admit that they're lost. They won't admit that I'm not doing it right. There's something wrong. You gotta turn yourself in to the altar. So what Satan does is he takes away the altar in, in church services. And he takes away the gifts of the Spirit. So he starts pulling things because you don't need this anymore. That was for the apostles. Well, they didn't even do so well with it. So I know we need it because we're not apostles. We're not the same caliber that they were. They laid the foundation of the church. And we're, we're like benefiting from what they warred for. But we need help. So I need tongues. I need you to speak words to me. We need to speak to each other. We need to build each other up. We need to be told, listen, if we're not right, don't wait until Jesus visits John on the Isle of Patmos to tell us we're naked. You might want to just get a new set of clothes. You might just want to go ahead and turn yourself in. And, and you're like, why are they always snickering at me? It's like, well, you, you don't have any clothes on. <laughs> what about gold that's tried in the fire? Why don't you... Why don't you buy for free gold with gold that's, that's tried in the fire? Like this, what, what's Jesus saying? I'm telling you, it's manifestation. There, there, is, there is spiritual and there is physical and there's the war in between. And, and there's, there's a violent that take it by force. It, it's called intercession. So all of you, it doesn't matter how well you're doing or how, how terrible you're doing. It doesn't matter to God. All he wants is you. He wants you to get back into your track. And, and most of you are there already. It's, it's, it's not like I'm, I'm talking to people that, you know, you wouldn't be here. What, what I'm saying is, is that God's love, loving God means that you obey him. What is he saying? He's saying, listen. If you will obey my word, he goes, you can ask anything you desire, not what you need, what you desire. It's in any language, it's desire. So he meets all our needs according to his riches and glory. Don't try to mess that up. 
God is very wealthy and he's saying that he will provide for your needs according to his riches in glory. The problem is there has to be a transaction into this realm. The manifestation comes through the resurrection power, which is based on the good news of the gospel. If you take away the power of God, you have no gospel and you have no manifestation. Does everybody understand that? All you have is behavior that's modified enough to, to on the surface appear that you're getting by. But inside, you're hurting. If, if your religion isn't working, then you ought to try the pure and undefiled religion, which is taking care of widows and orphans, feeding the poor, helping people, um, being there in your need, be there for people. You, you know, the, the, need, the needs will change because you're growing. You're maturing. And you, what you need now when you mature and you start walking with God, there's going to be decimals, commas, and zeros added to that number financially. But God can trust you, see, and it's just decimals. It's just zeros. It doesn't mean anything because, because it's not money. It's riches and glory. It's God's provision is different than the world system. The world system judges you a certain way. But I'm just as anointed as when I did have hair. It didn't affect my anointing whatsoever. <laughs> See, there's certain things that change in your life, but it doesn't affect your effectiveness. Because you are what you've been made to be, and that is you're made in the image of God. So Genesis 126 is God's plan. Jesus took it back in the garden to summarize. This is all my introduction so I can get into our study guide. Okay, you have to see that Jesus went to ground zero and took it back then went to the cross, paid for it, and then distributed. When he was risen from the dead, he distributed gifts to men when he ascended on high. He distributed himself to, to everyone, dispersed, so that we became the body. What is so hard about that? I'll tell you what it is. It's manifestation. Yeah. Satan fights your manifestation He's not fighting your faith. The good fight of faith is you don't do anything except stand. When you've done everything to stand, you stand firm. Manifestation is I prayed, God heard me, I have it. Why? Because I have great faith? No, because God loves me. His love was shed abroad in my heart. I am born again of the Spirit. The old has passed away. The, everything has become new. And I live and I move and I have my being in Him. And He is doing His ministry through you, through me. And the life I live is, is, is not my own. It's by faith in the Son of God. It's by manifestation. See, faith is an act. Faith is a manifestation. Faith is something that people see. Faith comes by hearing, but it's manifested through a transaction, an action. You have to manifest it. So when you learn to yield to the Spirit, when you learn not to manipulate and control people, when you learn that, you know what, I'm not doing a thing about this. If God, if God, if God said, listen, this is what I want you to do, then I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to manipulate people to pay for it. It's the same thing. You can't manipulate God to get you a better job. He already wants you to have a better job. I think some days he wants us to have a better country. It's, it's like, do you, do you salvage the one you have or you just start over again? I don't know. Just ask, let's ask te Texas. Maybe they can help us. I know Florida is going to help us. Well, see, what is it? It's, it's, it's having the right individuals there that yield, that aren't asleep. You get it? Okay, so, so down there, you know, like, oh, you have a, a, a shipping and receiving problem. You have a port problem. Well, just, just send all the ships to, to my state. And all of a sudden, it just all went away. Do you get it? Okay, this is because this, the world system is set up to control. But as soon as, as you... You, you are used to set 
it free by good news and you provide, well, just come to Florida. All of a sudden, it's resolved, right? All of a sudden, there's no problem anymore. Okay? So, so think about it. You never, did you ever think that your laptop could be so valuable? Well, it just depends upon what's on it. And you better be careful where you get it repaired. Okay, so everything's fine until it's, something is revealed. Okay, until there's like something in somebody's hand, a manifestation of something, it's just ethereal. It's just out there. It's cosmetic. It's a thought. It's a conspiracy. But when God manifests, there's pretty much, you know, there's no more argument. You know, there will be no argument in hell. There'll be no vote. There'll be no impeachment proceedings. There'll be none of this. These people will, will, will suffer torment for eternity. So they better enjoy it now. They think this is hell. This is nothing. Okay? But see, this is a gospel. Jesus said, listen, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. And what he was saying was, hell. You should fear the one that can throw both your soul and your body in hell, not man. I mean, to quote Jesus. I don't know if you want to bring him into this or not, but this is a Bible lesson. Okay, so this is where your transformation happens to hear God's voice. So this is the first lesson. Is the fact that God's plan from the beginning was that we had an open communication with him, and the fall caused the communication to be distorted so that even, even though Adam and Eve had a problem, God did not have a problem. He still came down and called for them and wanted to talk to them. And he talked to them face to face in a fallen state. They weren't repulsive to him. He talked to Cain, tried to coach him face to face. He talked to Moses face to face. He wanted to talk to all of Israel face to face, but they would not have it. They said, you go up there, Moses, and then come back and tell us what he said. They, they didn't want that fellowship face to face. That Israel was supposed to go up there. It's pretty clear in the Bible. He, God gave him another chance, made a tent of meeting so that all of Israel could come and meet with him. So why did, why did uh, uh, Moses and Joshua, are the only ones that showed up every day for the meeting? Okay, do you get it? Well, who was the leader that took over for Moses? Okay, but it says that he, he was face down in the presence of the Lord in the tent of meeting uh, day and night. Okay? So Joshua was prepared for what was coming next. So that's where we're at right now. But it would have been nice... For the last, the, the last period of time we went through, it would have been nice if someone would have said, you know what, I think we're lost. We just passed that 7-Eleven last year. <laughs> they, they never, like, they just kept circling. And it was, you know, it was barely a two-week journey. But they didn't turn themselves in. And this is... The first step to hearing God's voice is you turn yourself in because you got to locate yourself. God's, you got, you got to turn yourself into God so that he knows now that you're, that you're with him. And then from there, he can take you to where you're going. So Paul spent half his life working against God, and God had to meet him and arrest him because it had gotten to the point where what he said... Paul said, I was ordained and predestined as an apostle since birth. And it got to the point where it was getting late in the plan for the mystery of the ages to be revealed, which was through Paul. It got late. So we're right there now. We're right there right now. We're, we're on the road to Damascus. We're right there, and we're going to be arrested. 
because it's getting late in the game and God has to have this conversation with us. So Paul spent the rest of his life doing what he was always called to do, but it defaulted to it. It's just like Jacob. Abraham and Isaac both visited Bethel. They both honored the, the, the uh, altar that Abraham built there at Bethel. They visited there. Jacob should have known that he was to pay homage there to that altar. It was an open heaven there. Okay, so by default, he was running. He, by default, got tired and fell asleep on a rock, which is probably one of the altar stones from Abraham and his, and his father Isaac. He fell asleep and he had a dream of an open heaven where angels are coming uh, back and forth from heaven to the earth on a ladder. And this is what he said. He woke up and he said, I did not know that God was in this place. But he should have known. Why? Not because of faith. Not because of giving. Because of inheritance. Because of covenant. He already had that access. We need to have a moment. We need to just come and worship now. Because think about it. He always had that. He should have known that was an open heaven. He didn't take advantage of what his forefathers had opened up to him. That was open heaven. Bethel was the gateway to God, to heaven. It was the, it was the gateway. It was all, you don't need to open another portal. You don't need to call portals or us. You don't need, a, you don't need somebody to road or route you a portal. You don't. A new and living way has been opened to you by the blood of Jesus into the Holy of Holies. It's the same thing we go through. Martin Luther saw this and came against the biggest, most powerful denomination at the time. So was all this underlying stuff in our government before number 45 came? It was already there. But he was for the people. So he gave the people a voice. And that is when the world system starts to shake and quake. No, don't drain that because everything will be revealed. Put the plug back in there. Do not drain that swamp. You get it? Okay, you got it? Okay, so all of this has been done. There is, there, you know, like the new revelation is there is no revelation, new nev- revelation. It's already been given to us, and we're not taking advantage of the benefits that are at the table, and we have to do it by the power of God. So the key here to hearing God's voice is being willing to be wrong and knowing that what God wants very rarely happens. But it doesn't have to to be that way with you. He's just looking for people that will side with him and agree with him and make history on the earth. And he does it, unfortunately, it starts with just individuals. And then those individuals gather people together to be in agreement. They build those people up and it becomes a move. But see, we're years down the road from this, but then the fight is to to not make it a denomination where it becomes powerless again. It's a cycle. Because eventually it succumbs to the spirit of the world if we're not careful. If, if the leaders become Eli, and then you have Ichabod, th- then, then, then the glory departs, and that's what's happened. It's a cycle that happens. And so a lot of people right now, they need to re-engage God and finish right. They need to finish their race right. They need to have an honor, at least an honorable mention at the end of their life. Because they labored so strongly for the body but see, we don't have to fall into that. So at, this happens all the time. If you look through history, this always happens. It's a cycle. And really, to tell you the truth, Hebraic, Hebraic thought is actually Oriental thought because that area over there is really Oriental. The, th- the Oriental thought is cyclical. So the feasts and the Hebrew way of thinking is all seasons and times and seasons because it says that in the book of Acts. It is not for us to know the times and the seasons. It's only to be interpreted by the Father himself. If you want to bring um, Jesus into it, 
because it's what he told them in Acts chapter 1. It's not for us to know. But, then he says, but. You got to watch that, but. But, you shall receive power from on high when the Holy Spirit comes over. He, he, to he totally like says, okay, it's not for you to know all these times and seasons. It's for the Father. But, you're going to receive power from on high. See, this is the correction. We're just supposed to be concentrating on the Spirit that's within us and speaking from Him. Speaking forth the things that are not as though they were. So I'm never giving up on anybody. But the thing of it is, is if you have a bunch of boat anchors and you only need one, and we're not actually going to anchor right now, so you might want to put it up. In other words, I'm not dragging people around. You know, you're either in or you're out. And it, it, because the spirit of Jesus was like that. Are you in or you're out? Are you going to leave me too? Yeah, in other words, like, it's really too late in the game to be talking about um, what we should have done and could have done. We don't learn anything from history. We certainly don't learn anything from the disciples because they were in the same situation we find ourselves in all the time. We've got to make decisions, 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 decisions. But if you're not full of the Spirit, you cannot make good decisions. And I'm not worried about this country as, as, as much as I'm worried about my own life. Well, I'm not worried. You know what I'm saying. I'm very, I'm very uh, mindful that my decisions affect other people and it, that really I'm accountable for my own life. But I'm also accountable. I saw in heaven, you know, and, and the church has never told me this, but I'm actually accountable for what's written about me. And that affects everyone on the earth. Did you know that you affect everyone on the earth in some way? But you, you might not ever meet those people. But th these words that are going out, the reason I wear a tie, I don't want to wear a tie. The reason I wear a tie is because this will play for 30 years. And I want to look good. Because ties might come back in. They will. Not bell bottoms. I don't wear the bell bottoms because they're coming back. But what I'm saying is, is that I present myself as an ambassador. And, and in the time that I live in, I dress how I feel. And I feel, I feel as I'm an ambassador, I'm a, I feel like this is the way I want to dress. But I, I know that by preaching the gospel and telling you the truth, even though I make enemies, like Paul said, now that I've told you the truth, have I, are you my enemy? Even though it's the word of faith that's out there through my mouth, I'm speaking the word of faith. It's not a denomination or a movement. It is the literal words of God being spoken into the atmosphere, and it changes people even 30 years from now. I'm speaking to people that haven't been born yet. And that is changing history. But it started out with me, my wife, would, we would sit for hours, for years, alone, no, no friends. And she would ask me questions about the Bible, and I would teach her. We did that for years, and she was my only student. And I would just tell her, you know, well, this is what I found out. And she wanted to go to, to school, and she, she w went to college, but she didn't get to go to the schools that I went to. And she said, oh, I wish I was at Rhema with you. You know, I wish I would have been able to hear, uh, you know, all those great men and women of God that, that taught. And, and I said, well, here's what they said. Here's what, here's, here's what you can do. And I thought, you know what, I'll, we'll just start a school. And we'll make it so that people can do it and still you know, do what else they have to do. But I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm just doing what Brother Hagen wants me to do. And that's produce fruit. If I, if I meet him in heaven, he's, he's going to say, thanks for, thanks for carrying it. Thanks for producing fruit. That's all it's about. Did, what did I do with what I was given? I, I want to be his favorite, but I want to be Jesus' favorite. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is John Osteen was the best preacher I've ever heard in my life. John Osteen was it. That man, I mean, I could listen to him forever. And you know what? Andrew Walmack, he's nothing like John Osteen, but I can listen to him for hours. But he, 
but he has only one speed he talks at. <laughs> but I have everything he's ever put out. I've never met him, and I don't need to meet him. I'm just going to make, when he's in heaven, he's going to be proud of me, even though I never met him. So I'm telling you things that you can do because to have almost 27,000 students, I'm not that good. But what I do is I put forth the word of life. I put forth the bread. I, I, I cause people to have an environment where they can grow. And you can do that too. But everything you do and you say, it affects others. And that's why it's very important that you discern the Lord's body when you come to the table. Because if you don't, Judas didn't discern the Lord's body. He, didn't, he made decisions for the disciples. He didn't discern them. He sat there and ate unworthily, and Satan entered him when he ate the bread unworthily at the table. And Satan entered him, and he went out, and he, he, turned, he threw them all under the bus. He threw them all in the bus because he didn't discern the body. And Paul was saying, you're doing the same thing in the Corinthian church. You're, you're drinking judge. Can I say this? Because we're not in church. We're drinking judgment on ourselves. Paul said, when you drink of that cup unworthily, he's talking to Christians. You're drinking judgment upon yourself. Can't say that in church. You won't get an offering. You, you, you wouldn't want Paul to come to your church. He might come with a whip. That's what he said. He said, am I coming with a whip or are we coming in good terms? It's up to you. Right? It's my translation, but you know, it's... Now think about it. He, these people had an edge about them. Jesus, when I met him, he had an edge about him. He was not a dull sword. He goes, listen, if you want to live life and you want to pass all your tests, you've got to do what I say. You've got to turn yourself in and you do... And the first lesson for today is you know, you know nothing. Paul said it at the end of his life. He was ready to be beheaded. He goes, this one thing I've learned, Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. He was a theologian. He was under Gamaliel, who was going to be the head. He was a head Pharisee. Paul was next, was being groomed. That's why he was killing Christians, thinking that he would get some extra points. And he was a theologian. And in, in that time, you were a lawyer as well. So like when Paul, when he talks, he's, he's like doing it as a lawyer. He's proven his case with everything. When he talks, he's doing contrasts. He, you have to understand Paul, his mentality. He's, he's proven his point. Okay, so at the end of the age where we're at right now, Paul is in heaven, and he wants us to preach his gospel. It was an add-on. You have to accept this. Paul's was an add-on to the Gospels. If, if we didn't have Paul, we would not understand the benefits of being in him. Because Paul was given the mysteries of the... He said, I received this from Jesus Christ myself. I had no man. I confided in no one. He said, this is my Gospel, and this is it. Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. That this is the mystery of the ages that all those who came before us lay the foundation, and now at the end of the age, we are displaying his glory. That's us. And, and I, I cannot stand back and let people wait another generation for something that is our part. We, we, can't, we can't have people writing books about us in the next generation of how we missed it. We didn't discern it. We, we, we are under open. Like right now, we are under open heaven. Right now, is open heaven in this place. Open heaven. I don't need I don't need Andrew Walmack to lay hands on me. I don't need Brother Hagen to appear to me. I don't even need Jesus to appear to me. I got enough right now from what I have been given. I don't need I don't need that. I don't need a supernatural event. I need habitation. I need to be changed. You know, enough word has gone out. What about manifestation? What about, what about God is with you? They took note that they had been with Jesus. They turned the world upside down, those 12. They took note. Surely God is with you. When's the last time you were told that? Do you have to become an anomaly? 
before people start getting attention, like, like people look and say, how'd you do that? I mean, they, 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 there's people that, my brothers in the Lord, that are hiring people to reverse engineer me. It's like, well, just call me. I'll tell you. It's God. You, I'll save you the money. You're hiring the world to reverse engineer me? Uh, just call me. I'll tell you. It's God. You can do the same thing. You just got to turn yourself in and let the books in heaven be opened on the pages like Paul had his books. And he got a name change. The books were open and his name was changed from Saul to Paul. Jacob, he, when the books were open, Jacob defaulted. Paul, Saul defaulted. It should not have been that way. They had inheritance. But Jacob had an inheritance and it defaulted. He got a name change. He became Israel. That was always to be his name. Saul was always Paul. Paul the apostle, not Saul the, the persecutor. You get it? Okay, so this is, this is where John was told, tell the Laodiceans. They're blind. It was a church. It was one of the seven churches in Turkey, in northern Turkey. You're blind, you're poor, you're naked. Okay. So the best thing to do is turn yourself in. That's what Jesus said. If you have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. You can hear God's voice. You can hear God's voice. He's saying something. But what he's saying is your answer. When, I, when, when you do this and you turn yourself in, the first thing you're going to want to know, okay, now what do I do? And the Lord's going to say nothing. See, you're waiting to do something to Jimmy with it, to make it right. What if it's made right because you turned yourself in? What, what if your debt is canceled? What if you owe God nothing? Because you're not going to be able to pay him back anyway. All right, is it still today? Yeah. So we got five minutes. Let's turn to chapter one. Um, verse 13. I mean, page 13. Genesis, Genesis 127 says, So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created a male and female. He created him. That's in, um, at the top of the page. We talked about 2 Corinthians 517. It says that, Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, period. That means they're done. And according to Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, the, there, the case is closed. There is no accusing voice against you. There is no condemnation. In other words, there's no file in heaven. Behold, all things have become new. That means everything's new, which means the old is gone. Did I mention the old's gone? Okay, did I mention that everything's new? Okay, that is right now. Is there, 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 you, want the, you don't want to know what the, the, the great reset has happened inside of you. All right. Okay, so the born-again experience is the reset. That is the big revelation. That is the mystery revealed. That is God now. He's completely hardwired in his communication. You have a landline. That is a local call. It's no longer a long distance call. You have a local line to God through the born again experience. Okay, so if you read the word of God regularly, as it says in, in, it's on page 14, which is the next page over, if you, if you, it says if you read the word of God and meditate on it, what happens? It's a question 
Well, what happens is, is it verifies what's already inside of you. The Word of God is living inside of you. When you read the Word of God, you already are guaranteed a return. Amen. It's just like when I was at Southwest Airlines. Any, any amount of money that I invested, they matched it. So it was dollar for dollar. So I automatically, every year, I took up to 50% of my salary. Don't tell my wife. But I, I took half my salary at times, and they doubled it. They put it away. They matched it dollar for dollar. Well, you can't get 100% return. Well, I mean, I, I have, but I mean, you, that's not something that's normal. It's usually 10%, you know, over 30 years or whatever. You, that's the average, okay? But 100% every year, like, and I'm like wondering, like, why people at my job were eating their seed? Like, they were, they were working, and they were making just enough to pay their bills, and they weren't putting anything away. And I couldn't understand, like... Oh, no, no, you've got to work a little extra, and then you've got to put a part of it away because it's a 100% return. They match it, so that's 100%. And you put that away, and then you start paying off your mortgage by working a little extra, too, as well. So you work a little extra. It's tax-deferred. You put that away, and then you work extra. But, like, um, like people, I, I mean, I'm serious. I got people to think this way. They go, so we, we, would, we would have this conversation. I would fly with people, and they're like, so, oh, you picked up this trip for extra. Because we, we'd already all flown, but we, we, three days is all we had to work a week. Because we got paid for 30-some hours for three days. Because we, we, got, we got paid, we, were, we did 10-hour days or 12-hour days. Okay, so if, we, if we, we knew each other, and we're like, hey, I thought you worked Monday through Wednesday. What are you doing Thursday through Saturday? It's like, oh, refrigerator. I'm getting a new refrigerator. And so the, the, the second trip was, was just like, we would just say, new floor. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. So why wouldn't you invest in yourself with the word of God? By, by sowing in your, the words. That's what I'm trying to say here. Is it's doll, it's, if, it's, if Southwest Airlines gave you dollar for dollar, which no one did, then what do you think the return on the Word of God is? Well, it's a hundredfold, not a hundred times. It could be a hundredfold. I'll take the hundredfold. It's 30, 60, or 100, but I'll take the hundredfold return on the Word of God. So all the Word that I've sown out, I expect a hundredfold return, which is exponential, which is 10 to the hundredth power. Not 10 times, 10, you know, 100. 10 to the 100th power. That means it's multiplied by the amount that you get another. It's, it's, it's completely compounded exponentially. Which means in just a few years from just a seed of wheat, in just three and a half years you have a field. A field of wheat. Because you have three heads on each each each, each uh Stock of wheat, thank you. I was going to phone a friend. <laughs> I, or buy a vowel. I had, you have three heads, 32 seeds on each head. So you, you don't eat that, and you plant it next year, and then you take that and you compound. You got a field in three and a half years, or three years. Okay, this is how the Word of God works. If you just talk about money with this, you've lowered it because that's just one thing on the table. But what about healing? What about your relationships? What about hearing from God? If you bombard yourself with an, an environment, you can, you can excel in just a few weeks of doing something every day, all day, was what I do. And, and that's how, that's how I, I found the, how we're made. When I was in heaven, I saw this, so that's what I do with everything. I saturate my environment so that I grow. I bombard myself with nothing but that subject until it becomes, it becomes second nature where 
where, where that environment is more familiar than my house. I learn how to navigate through that. It becomes my home. It becomes who I am. And I've learned this. I've done this with so many things. You can do this too. That's the way we're made. It's just, if we're saturated, it becomes, it becomes our reality. Just ask Disney. They were doing it the whole time. The CIA understands this with MK Ultra. They understand all this. I'm looking for the men in black now. But no, if you, if you know that they know, then that, that's very frustrating to them. But here, here, here's the thing. We were made to not be able to discern. You can be so deceived, you think you know the truth and you're deceived. Because what you have done is you've chosen a lie. And it's become your truth. It's become your reality. And you have to be told you're naked. Are you all following me? Okay, so... If you study the Word of God, the Word of God equips you, but, but the reality is eternal, and it has great rewards. This matches, the, the words on the page will match what God is saying to you in your spirit. It, will, it is a common ground, and it's a starting point on hearing God's voice. So he can... He can speak to you through his word. And then when you're out and about, you hear, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I would do this. And you're like, I need chapter and verse. No, no, he can speak to you. See, because you're accustomed to receive truth. But if it's not another voice, you won't follow. Because you've trained yourself. So, so if, if, I, if I'm flying, something is so hard for me, all these memory items, if you have an emergency, you're like, how am I going to memorize all this stuff? But then all of a sudden, it's like, it goes poof like that, and there's a decompression in the cabin. You've got just a few seconds before you lose consciousness, and you've got passengers on board, and you're at 45,000 feet. So what you do is you create an atmosphere where you know where the oxygen mask is, and you just reach back there and grab it. You put it on, and then you reach and you hit the switch because that's now your intercom to talk to the controller because he's not going to hear your boom mic anymore. And you pull the throttles back, and you start a descent, and you squawk 7700. And you put the gear out, and you put the, the, uh, the uh, spoilers out. And you call and you say, I'm going to need a slot from 45,000 down to 10,000 because that's where oxygen you can breathe yourself. You hit the switch for the mask, so the passenger's mask come down right now. You do all that like that. Why? Because it becomes, it becomes your environment where you know everything, and you just know what to do. But see, to you, if you're up there, you're like, why is it getting foggy in here? And you go, poop. And it's like, all right, well, see you on the ground. See you on the ground. But see, you're not any good to anybody if you're sleeping. The only way that you can be any good is if you do what you've saturated. The right thing to do is in that emergency environment, which is to get that mask on and start a descent and make sure you don't overspeed the airplane. So you put the gear out right away and you start your descent. And you get down to 10,000 feet as fast as you can. But you're, you're, you're almost nine miles up at 45,000 feet. And 10,000 is two miles. And you have to do that within a certain amount of time. So most people would be unconscious, but you don't need to be unconscious because you've been taught, you've been told what the truth is and how to operate within that. But and unless you make it second nature or just like that's just, you know how to do that and you know you just do that, you don't question it. If you do that, then you're a hero. If not, you're dead. Okay, so this is what happens with Christians. Things happen that you, you're not prepared for. But see, in Psalms 91, it says, it says that a thousand are going to fall and 10,000 at your right hand, but it's not going to come near you. So it doesn't negate that, that the, the fact that there could be an emergency. 
But are you prepared for it? So I'm telling you all right now, I'm telling you all right now, you better do everything you can for your immune system right now. This is when you do it. On the road to Damascus. This is when you do it. You don't get your healing scriptures out in the middle of it. You don't wait for the healing move. You are the healing move. Okay. Oh, yeah, but you're talking about two different things. You're talking about health and, and uh, immunity, and you're, and, and you're talking about healing. It's like, well, God's perfect will is you don't need healing. Well, that went over well. Okay. okay, so God never planned on us to not be able to communicate with him. But since we have this situation, we, we should be investing in this communication. We should be investing in knowing what the procedures are in red in an emergency and what to do when these things happen. We should already know that there's going to be a thousand fall and 10,000 at our right hand, but it shall not come near you. That it shall not come near you is totally up to you. It doesn't default to that, just like Bethel didn't default to Jacob. It did default to Jacob, but it, didn't, it wasn't his intention. It had to be that way. We find ourselves in this situation where you default to, having, to have me say what I'm saying tonight. But just like John on the Al Patmos, it wasn't supposed to be this way. Jesus shouldn't have to appear to somebody and say, can you write the seven pastors because they're, lo- they're not listening to me. They're not, they're not opening their emails. Right. We find ourselves in this situation, and this is the way history is. If you want to study history, this is what you'll learn. Is we, know, we learn nothing from history. We, we, learn, we don't learn our lessons. However, there is everything we need for life and godliness. Life and godliness, which means our body, our soul, and our spirit. Everything we need for life and godliness has been given to us. It says, through the power of God and the precious promises that have been given to us, we have everything we need. We can be partakers of the divine nature. Well, what is part of the divine nature? Well, I would think the divine health and not just divine healing, but divine health. Okay? It's the same thing with everything else. There, there's plenty of money down here. It's just in the wrong hands. Okay? So it's not about, like, being greedy. It's about, it's about covenant and authority and ownership and, and the plan for God. I mean, nobody here wants to lose money. No business is ever open to lose money except our government. But, you know, that's not a business. Maybe it is now. Why is oil national security? Why, why is the energy department part of national security? Why is oil under national security? Well, you're finding out. You're finding it out right now. See, in other words, the spirit of God brings you freedom. The word of God is Jesus, and he sets you free. If you want to experience freedom, then you have to have the word of God. You have to have Jesus in, in you, which you do. But you also have to have the spirit of the Lord in you, and you do. However, if you're not experiencing this freedom, you shouldn't be intimidated or sad or feel left out or rejected because God is not looking at you rep- as you, though you're repulsive. He wants to have a conversation with you. So this image that we've been created in was that we would have fellowship with him. It's, he's, he fought for us because he wants us to be his friend. Now, as a friend, there's certain things that I'm not going to do, or that person's not going to be my friend anymore. And one of them is, one of them is this. You know, it's the sermon that I taught in Phoenix, Arizona a couple years ago. Why is my world so small? And I gave them the answer because me, myself, and I live there. And we're taught to be 
survivors and self-preserve and to, to, to leverage our positions and everything. And Jesus said, you, if, you, if you don't die, you can't live. You'll, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't give your life up, you're going to lose it. But if you lose it for my sake, you're going to gain it and everything with it. If you walk away from everything, you're going to gain everything, even in this life. You're going to gain houses, and you know it says that in the Bible. Since this isn't church, I can say this. But it says houses and family and persecutions. Okay, so the Word of God is active. It's incorruptible, and it produces a crop. So it's total saturation that causes you to be able to do the right thing in any situation and to know what God's will is. Because you're well-versed in the manual. And you will react, if you get it down to where it's emergency procedures, you can react without even thinking about it and, and, and be a hero in a generation that's perverse. Jesus called them doubting you, you unbelieving, you perverse generation. Why did you doubt? But see, God is not faith. God is love. God is love, and he drives out fear. And he's driving out fear right now from you. And, and you know, all of you can come and start playing. God, when he shows up, he drives out fear. Perfect love drives out fear. So Jesus told me, if you want to, to get rid of your victim mentality, he said, replace my name in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Where it says love, replace my name in there. Not my name, God's name, Jesus' name. So God, God is God. And if you look at what's being said there, he, he does not keep records of wrongs. He thinks the best of everybody. God thinks the best of everybody. So love considers not a wrong done to it. So God considers not a, a wrong. If you look at God that way, this reset happens and you're not a victim anymore because God's for you. Okay, so, he, so right now, as I'm, I said that, I was looking over here, and everybody disappeared over here as, 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 as I said that. And this is what I said. The Lord says, pronounce the blessing on them. He said, he said, my face is shining upon them. Tell them that. He said, my face is shining upon them right now. That's what he just said. He said, pronounce the blessing on them. He said, he said, the sun of righteousness has risen upon you. And he said, he said, my face is shining upon you. That means his favor is shining upon him right now. Right now. Receive it. They all disappeared. And the Lord said, pronounce a blessing on them. He said, my favor, I'm shining. I'm smiling on them right now. Why? Because Jesus took the hits for you. Come on now. Okay, so this is what we do. This is what we do. There, you should see the people that are in heaven. You, you're going to be surprised at all your heroes. But they're in heaven right now, and they're cheering us on. And they're yelling, tell them about this. Tell them about this. I know I was there. They're like saying, you got to tell them about this. I hear, I hear the Lord saying things, and that's why I don't use notes. It's because I already wrote that stuff. I know what it says. But I have to go the angle that, that the Spirit of the Lord knows you need it to go in. And this is the angle, is the Lord knows where you're at, but He needs you to just turn yourself in tonight. Listen, you can't carry the stress of what's going on in this world. I can't carry the stress of how people have reacted. People, good people are completely neutralized and paralyzed right now. And they're dead in the water. And this is the time where Jacob found himself exhausted in the middle of a desert in the wilderness called Bethel. And it was his provision. 
It was his, it was his covenant that he had the whole time. Listen, I'm telling you, the reason that I'm doing this is because I saw that my life counts and I cannot be silent and I was sent back, not sent back to be the boy that came from heaven, that went to heaven and came back. I was sent back as like a voice crying in the wilderness. It's kind of weird that John didn't go to the synagogues. He went out into the wilderness. And it's kind of strange how, like, here we are again. The, the gospel is still true. Jesus is still powerful, seated on a throne. And everything that he's ever said to you and ever, you've dreamt about all the dreams he's telling me, that you've dreamt, all the words that you've been given, they're all still true. It doesn't matter. Jesus said to Pilate, and he says to the Biden administration, he says, you wouldn't have this power unless it was given to you by God himself. You have no power over me. I lay it down at my own will. I'm not from this world. Oh, you, so you, are, you do have a kingdom. Yeah, but it's, I'm a king and I'm not from this world. That's what Jesus said to Pilate. He said, don't you know I can release you? He says, you have no power unless God himself gives you. Right? He, Jesus said it. He willingly turned himself over. What, what if at this time, whoa, book this thing. You see that thing attack me? <laughs> Hold that. Mark it down. If Pilate confronted Jesus like that and Jesus talked to him like that, what do you think Jesus would do right now? Because Jesus' body, you, we're, we're being persecuted. And Jesus is saying, he's defending us. And he's saying, you have no power unless it's given to you by God himself. And it's interesting that God was not able to speak to Pilate, but he spoke to his wife in a dream and said, have nothing to do with that man, Jesus. She, she begged him, just wash your hands and, and stay out of it. And, and what, what, what we, I'm telling you, when we get to heaven, you'll remember this night because you'll see that this was all a setup. It was all a setup. It, we, we were to make a decision to make history. I am, I'm telling you, I am not. I am not giving up. I'm not letting go. But I'm, I'm, I'm for the body because that's Jesus. He's the head, but we're the body. And we represent him on this earth. And it's the gates of hell cannot prevail against that body. Could it be that we just need to have an environment of saturation where we think about these things, about the glorious church and about the gates of hell not prevailing against the church? Maybe it's just that we need to start thinking about that, make that our reality and our environment. And you know what? They think we're crazy anyway. But, but I... If that's my reality, then just, you know, just in California, they let you go. If, you, if you're weird, they're like, you're like them. They don't even bother you out there unless you're singing, you know, and then they don't want you to sing, you know, but that's just recently. I heard the birds are all leaving. Okay. Can you, can you somehow see that if I saw the future and I was sent back and this whole thing's rigged in our favor and it really is and I'm not cha I'm never changing my message even if I have to do this from jail I'm never going to change the message I'm never going to change because you cannot chain, chain the gospel you cannot stop the gospel it's always going to be good news and it's always going to work but it works through us. I just feel in my spirit that, that we need to turn ourselves in and be perfected in love. And let's start with love. And what it is is that God's love is made is shed abroad in our hearts. 
Well, what would that be? That means that you actually get over yourself. You forgive yourself. You get over yourself, and then you can love your neighbor as yourself. See, I'm telling you, if you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. And the only way you're going to love yourself is to have the revelation that God loves you. You're going to find this out when you get to heaven. But I'm telling you now so that you can change history. Because you don't have to wait till you get to heaven to find these things out because they've already been mentioned in the Word. And the Spirit is wanting to take that off and make it reality in your life. You've got to make a transaction. You've got to make a manifestation happen. How you do that is you pray in the Spirit and you pray in the understanding and you don't take no for an answer. Now, like right now, the power of God wants to heal people power of God wants to prophesy to you. But I have been prophesying to you the whole time. I just spent the last two hours prophesying. Speaking by the Spirit, talking you into the reality of heaven right in this room right now is completely free. You know, just not that many miles from here, I went to school and I prayed in the Spirit and I fought devils and I won. And then when I'm in the hotel room and I'm thinking just not that far from here, I used to go to school here and fight devils and fast more than I ate, study more than I did anything else. I hardly went outside. I remember one day, my, one of my friends, she brought over her little TV. I hadn't watched TV in three years because I gave it up because I just want to saturate myself under, under the Word of God at Ramah. So I gave it all up and I just, I just prayed all the time. I started crying. I watched that little TV, watched Mayberry and Brady Munch, you know. And and, and today I'm sitting there and I'm 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 praying in tongues to where I'm in the spirit. And I was looking around in the spirit at this area. And There were no enemies in the spirit. And I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. I fought devils while I was here. And I I, I totally forgot that I used to live here. Well, what happened? I, I, I won, I overcame. And my reality became God's word and his in his will for my life. My the will for for my life is that not only do I prosper and be in good health as my soul prospers, according to the Bible, but that you also prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. So your soul prospers by hearing good news. But then the benefit of that is that you prosper in your spirit and in your body as well. They're all interconnected. So this... This new creation, this image that's been restored, it it is back to the original in your spirit. And don't let anyone ever tell you differently. When I was in heaven, I was outside my body and I was back to Adam and Eve. But I was better because I wasn't all that. I knew where I came from. I danced with the one that brought me because that's my right home. I don't forget where I came from. But the atmosphere here was was foreign to me. It was no big deal. What happened? Well, that was 36 years ago. I've grown a little bit since then. Now, the angels of the Lord came to Jesus when he was tempted in the desert. It says that after his tempted in the desert, angels came and ministered to him. So if he needed if he needed ministry of angels after being tempted, then we certainly do. So that's what I wait for here. That's why I close at 9 and I wait till 9.30. I stand here and stare at you because I'm waiting for the ministry of the angels. It's not spooky, it's, it's biblical. I, I, need, I need minister to. I just gave out a whole bunch. You, you need minister to. You've been through a lot, you've been tested, tried. And at about time 
that you accept the ministry of angels. Jesus got ministered to by angels. He wasn't all of that because he humbled himself and became a man. He was subject to the same things that we are, but was without sin. But he still needed ministry of angels, right? So that's what I'm waiting for now. Now you can go. Restaurants are already closed, but you can go. Or you can worship with us because this is going to shorten. These messages are going to shorten and shorten in the coming months. And we're going to have time where we come up to the altar. We're going to worship and pray. We're going to get on our knees at our seat. And we're going to seek God. And we're going to start to see manifestation. We've heard enough word. We need manifestation now. And you need, you need God to intervene in your life. Oh, there it is. Okay, everybody raise your hands. Here it goes. Come on. Come on. See the wave and how many see us you want to get it. That's the door of the drag and all the money drag in the man of water. Come on. You need a drink. The Spirit saying you need a drink of the Spirit. Drink fully of me, for I am all you need. Be filled with the Spirit. These are not drunk as you suppose, but these are filled with the Spirit. This is to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Joel. They're not drunk with wine. Be being filled with the Spirit. Come on, all of you watching all over the world, you got thousands of people watching all over the world. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. Receive and drink. Oh my. Waves of glory coming upon the church, getting the spots and wrinkles out. For the bride is going to be snatched away. To step over. Oh yeah, we're just getting started here. Yes, enter in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Lord the Lord say by spirit. I got it. I got it from here. I got it from here. The Lord says, I got it from here. You need to just yield to the Spirit now. Come on now. This is the final move of God. It's the move of the Father. It's the Father God in His glory coming. I can't hear you. Spirit wants to say some things for you. Come on now. Engage the Holy Spirit. Engage the Spirit of God. Come on, we need your voice. We need your voice. Come on. Yeah. yeah, the Lord's going to silence the mocking spirits. He's going to silence the voices. Yeah, devils, you got to go. You got to go, devils. Rakhe <laughs> Rusi tera bare, he na bare, kira bosu tera bare. 
the Lord is surrounding you. He's surrounding you with a wall of fire and he's singing songs of deliverance over you. Right now, the evil spirits are leaving. Deliverance has come. Healing has come. The Lord's saying, listen, what if I do everything you're doubting? What if I do it anyway? What if I love you and I do it? What if I perform my word anyway? What if all the things you're fearing that don't happen, what if, what if, what if I make them happen anyway in spite of your unbelief? I'm that good. The Lord says, I'm that good. What if I do it anyway? Ha, ha, ha. Oh, yeah, you just need to get over yourself. Ha, ha, ha. Drink. Drink of the Spirit right now. Drink of the Spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. The victory is in the camp. The songs of deliverance are being sung over you. The wall of fire is around you. Some of you need to get up here. Some of you need to get up here and pray. Come on. Let's get up here and worship God. Rati Hanamasi Namare Hanarae Rasiti Kinamasura Bahayaradisi. We won't fight it any longer. We won't fight it any longer. We're gonna watch you move in our lives and our families. Oh, we won't fight. What we're gonna do? Oh, we'll stand amazed in all and wonder of what you do. Cause what you do is so much better. We'll stand amazed at what you do as you come and move. We give ourselves over. We give ourselves over. We give ourselves over to you, yes, trustworthy one. We give ourselves over to you. We give ourselves over to you. We give ourselves over to you, trustworthy one. Cause you care for my you see me and you know just what I need at the right time yes you care for my heart 
old things have passed away they've passed away and i'm brand new and old things have passed away they've passed away no hindrance I'm coming after you and there is no hindrance there is no hindrance I'm coming after you cause all things have passed away they've passed away I'm brand new Cause all things have passed away They've passed away And I'm brand new things have passed away they've passed away and i'm brand new cause all things have passed away they've passed away and i'm brand new yes i'm brand new my life is found in you My life is found in you And I'm brand new
Thank you for all you've done for 